Okay. Ah, oh, come on. Is it not registering the game again? It was earlier, so that's weird. Actually, that's really weird. Whoops. Alright, let's see if I can figure this out. Because this is odd. Okay, so I'm gonna probably just have to do it like this. Okay. Alright, whatever. It's confusing as hell and make I'm sure it's not Oh wait, it's back. What the fuck? So did it just not register that the game was there? Or something? What the hell? Oh my god. My cats are is being a pain. Okay, well this is the letter. Um This is the letter, it's a horror visual novel. Um I played I have played this game before a little bit. Um Sort of. Um, it's not. I got a pretty good way through it too, actually. Um, but after a certain point, I did have. I did stop, and then, like, now I don't really remember where I last left off. I don't remember how far I got. I do remember some things, but not like enough to like get me by. So. I'm just restarting it and everything. Oh, fun. Wait, I don't hear any sound. Um. Oh, I'm s that's why. Hold up. I shouldn't switch this over. Okay. And you guys. There we go. Okay, I got it. Alright, Dear Guard Mansion. It's before um, Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermagard. I'm I'm hoping to God I'm saying that right because I really have no clue. Humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by the people. Both are well known for their compassion and generosity. They're willing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Do I have the option to have... Um, Okay, so, okay, whatever, I'll, hopefully. Alright, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone's in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small, steepy village grew into a prosperous, bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of the Great Plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermagard. The major has stood since on the 1620s, a witness to the very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually uninhabited. And that's when it began. The surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the night and hear filled the nights and hearsay of mysterious women roaming the ha halls endlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply but never heard of again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers uh, about the once great house, its legend and its curse, still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. 
like Pandora's box. The secrets that lay inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. Okay. Isabella. Alright, except. Hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? Oh yeah, I forgot this was based in like Britain and stuff. A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? She sounds upset. It's a mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Oh. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh I'm my sorry. god, please don't tell me you forgot. Yes. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? Maybe. You chickened out. Yes. I Calm did. down. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It'd be nice. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. <laughs> This not real after all. Well, clearly this is a game, so clearly they are real in this game, so... And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. Yeah. Sure. If Phobia has taught me anything, spirits are nothing to be trifled with either. You don't know <laughs> that! They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. <laughs> No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. <laughs> right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. And I think that mansion is where we'll likely <laughs> find another one. Wait, another one? Feel it. I forgot about that. Seriously, another one? The fuck? That was one time, Isabella! Loosen <laughs> up! Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Oh, God. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. She hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. And who was that? I look up from my phone to see Rebecca. Becca, giving me a crushing look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. The one who trained you. Oh, the, the words are different. You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Yeah. Your buyers become haunted. Or cursed. Hold on. Is this the same mansion you've been telling everyone about? Yes. Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there? And you're going back? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. Yeah, promises are kind of going to be kept. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. You make a shit ton of money off a mansion, though, so... <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca gives a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. <laughs> I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out ever since you got assigned to it. That place being creepy. Yeah, curse rumors and all. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Mm. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus! They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. True. They're desperate, I'm desperate, it's perfect. But desperation, in this case, might lead to your death. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, 
If you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. She's a, she's nice. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell to expect to, uh, to expect when she has that expression. Becca, I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. Hey, instant noodles are fine, and it's really cheap. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. The voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you. That means nothing when you're dirt poor. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. Okay, that's fair. Um, I eat other things too. Hey, maybe I eat other things too. Maybe. I put my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture and giving her the best frown I can muster. Same one I use with my younger siblings when they're being difficult. Instead, she raises, only raises an eyebrow at me. Yeah, she called me on my bull face lie. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning <laughs> your flat last week. <laughs> oh, what the fuck, Damon? <laughs> the instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. That means nothing. I'm eating something else, apparently. You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? Instant noodles? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. I don't... Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with Beck on this one. <laughs> Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green at the last one. <laughs> oh god. That, yeah. I don't think that's very healthy. I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Wait, what? Nani? <laughs> Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. Food poisoning? In any case, those like, are still major? not exactly healthier choices, Val. Alright, have fun lur lurking here. This is definitely a weird game. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some distant memory. Whoops. Oh wait, I didn't mean to do that. When she, when she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's better to let Becca talk until she let, gets everything out. But when she turns her attention back to me, there's only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She's a good friend, though. I'll admit that. She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. Uh, sometimes eating the same thing's fine. Maybe you like it. <laughs> Didn't no, I, guess I, I tell you before? You're always free to reheat my leftovers. Ooh, free food. She is a wonderful friend. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. <laughs> You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. <laughs> ah, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I'm not in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain I would never take that offer. Ever. It's nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen pr plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse, just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue a lot about small, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance sling behind me, snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Okay. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. I'll treat you to the whole store if I get that sale and don't die. You bet! With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins sifting through the pages of, of the rather thick history book. 
She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to what's on the page. <coughs> As if shared by thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to start pulling the sounds. You know, she better uh, do as he preaches. This uh, is precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. <laughs> just don't die. I like you. I love it with a flat look. She had that cold for a couple days now. Something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take a week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine the doctor described. Look at who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. Yeah, we've been making her wait for a little while. I'll call you if I still feel bad. And you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile and a lonely sigh. She doesn't call it, does she? Why do I even bother? There's no stopping her when she's decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag and pull out the same bottle, the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at me warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is one thing I'm not letting her have her wait with. Alright, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts him back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. <laughs> Rebecca! <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before you tour, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation in my short visit. The small wave, I leave her alone in the classroom and her thoughts. Alright, before I continue, I want to check this out real quick. I haven't... I don't remember anything that's in here. Um... Okay. Profiles. Okay. So, this is Maria Isabel Grace Cruz Santos. Um, she was born May 28th. She's 20... I think that's 20... Yeah, 26 years old. Um, she's shorter than me, so... Fair. Alright, she's a real estate agent. She's Filipino. Um, she likes cinnamon rolls, dogs, food, police, procedural dramas. Uh, a teleseries, I guess. Oh, dramas and teleseries, okay. Comedies and karaoke. She's third child among seven, daughter of a laundry woman and a, um, jeepney driver. She went to a public school and was an average student, but took to art easily. Eventually, she pursued a degree in fine arts, as encouraged by her father. However, when the man was diagnosed with terminal, can terminal illness, he had to, she had to stop studying to make money. It was Isabella's aunt who helped her get overseas in order to earn more money than any local job could get her. Rose Cooper became her mentor as soon as she started BRC. It's been five years since she met her neighbor, Rebecca. She met Ashton during an unfortunate incident involving her first sale at Dublin Court, and later Zachary through him. The, I'm guessing the unfortunate sale was that one with a body stuffed in the couch. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what the fuck is up with that? <laughs> yeah. And I don't get anybody on them, okay. God. Ooh, I went up. I like how I'm, I got such a shitty relationship with him and I don't even know him. I don't even know Hannah. Or... Or her, based off, just based off that little description. I only know you, you, and you. Okay. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently everyone in Luxburg knows, uh, Luxburg City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for locals to be costed with sidelong glances. I learned the hard way the first time I commuted there, and only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of being renovated and placed back in the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I've read my eyes from the window once the building shrinks in the distance. 
We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes from our destination. Might as well try to get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know um, when things may go wrong. Life has always had a way of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading, my paper, reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, nearly tucking it between my ear and my shoulder. It's probably Rose again anyway. Rose? Oh, nope. Guess again. <laughs> that voice. Ash. Bingo. <laughs> hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. Are we doing this evening again? I you forgot. mean that thing with Zach? Oh, that. Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. <laughs> no, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. Fair. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. All right, I was really close to pronouncing that right. I was really close to pronouncing that name right. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally <laughs> toughened up. Shut up! That's Chuckles, but I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. I'll see if I can pick you up. Whatever. Bye. <laughs> that stupid Ash <asshole. laughs> Oh, I forgot about that pun. I love that. Always cheese me whenever he sees the chance. I'll show him who's tough. Okay. Takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the Infest Mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look good from the outside. Yet despite all this, it does nothing to hide something is just wrong. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of leaves can be heard and the occasional breeze passing by. While the An Anselm village is a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes you feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. It's uncanny in broad daylight. I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Who planning to go inside that place, Missy? The voice seemed to make me jump out of my skin. Yeah, me too. <laughs> if that completely take my eyes away from the house, the driver gives me a confused nod. The beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a knock middle hum. But lately, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slapped myself for spacing out and promptly handed him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I paid, but there's a hesitant expression on, on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. Yeah. I admit they did a good job fixing it up. But there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. I mean, you can... They did, it's a decent job and everything. It's still a little... Like, just from the, this picture here, it still is a little messed up a bit. But it's not bad. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. M maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after. But what he said left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathed out a heavy sigh as I approached the house. After hearing enough r rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Back now com is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice anyway. If I want to get that bonus in commission, one way or another, I've got to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the key dangle aims uselessly in my hand. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. Maybe the only people here, but I've never known her as someone care as known her as someone careless. Wait, is that the lady like um up here at the right top top of corner here? The one that was hanging in the title screen? I just saw that. Entering what entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping. They cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made a spick and span. 
Offer the sake of the mansion and man make the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them and leave the place alone. Some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed again. Rose? Ooh, that goes. I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. Where, are Where are you? Man, there's an echo. My voice echoes softly through the, the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She'll be all on the other side of the property for all I know. Whoops. My accent came. Right, the number what? you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. The fuck? What do you mean it has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she's been eaten by the house, right? Or or maybe the ghost did hear us talking to her wait. Right? Right? No, Isabel, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper in the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping to connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about Rose? this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. Come, out. come on, Rose. This isn't funny. funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a, whoops. I take a deep breath before venturing into the mansion. Taking a couple of steps, I noticed something move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. <laughs> okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until she kn until I know she's alright. Growing desperate, I try to contact her number again. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond, but there's also heavy static coming from her side. I really hope she doesn't get cut off again before I get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm What? The attic? Why? God, the sound. Crap, it got cut off. Man, do I really need to go up there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? Out of all the places, she has to make me go fetch her from the creepiest room of this place? She should just get back at me for being late. Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about the being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. Legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. Yeah, I don't think I would ever do real estate either. Plus, I can't really sell anything to, some, to save my life, so. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. It branches on two major wings, um, the east and the west wing. There are two attics on each side. There are two attics here, one on each side. But the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it at least like Rose be um, to wander up there by herself. Besides, you never do like going to stuffy rooms. So I head towards the west wing first, where a simple floor, a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stone and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up in the air every step. They didn't clean the attic? I thought they cleaned everything. Thank God it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old this place is, there are no light fixtures to illuminate the current passages. Why didn't they bother to add one here when they renovated it escaped me? Jeez. They did it to the rest of the house. 
Is my bedroom welcomes me at the end? Well, this is nice music. It looks exactly as it did since last time I've been here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd. I think they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Now, cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did not miss her? No, no. I couldn't have been a, a dream. After all, the creepy uh, ambiance of this estate is doing a remarkable job of making sure I stay awake and alert. I'm sure she says she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe... The phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Uh, shut up, Brian. You're not helping. <laughs> Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? <laughs> what the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew to serve this page was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always tried to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning my back for the sake of my sanity. Me personally, I don't got much sanity, so... I'm, I'm turning, I have to be turning back just for my life. Bright Realty can find another agent who is more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted house. Before leaving, I take one last look around the gloomy old room. Just to check. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts have, must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But it's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter? Me letter. <laughs> Laying on the ground, just a couple inches from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I bend down and pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. Beauty is back, me and a few other agents inspect the mansion to prepare for today. I have been the last to look inside the attic and leave. It certainly hadn't been there before. Someone must have left in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? She, she, was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed it, though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. This isn't exactly pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather really ancient. Paper's so thin and rough, I'm worried it'll fall apart um, if I so much as touch it. With great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to very core. What? What? Oh my god. Is it blood? Nothing but the worst helped me fill the page. All of it seemed to be written in crimson shade of pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just goes on and on until... Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else what? I quickly, as quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the into the envelope to make sure it's, I'm not missing out on the second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands are trembling as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding paper in, in half, the side that greets me has me frozen on the spot. A pair of blood-soaked feet enter my field of vision, covering the gate covered in gaping wounds, with skin eaten away to reveal flesh and bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch my throat. Even my feet will move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Oh lord, please help me. Um, look up. I intend to face it. Whoever, whatever these feet belong to, I need to face it. And if I'm going to die, if they're going to kill me, I at least want to know what my killer looks like. I want it. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> a cold comfort. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of courage I have left in me and shift my gaze upwards. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot about that. Please, don't hurt me. <laughs> 
<laughs> God. No! I forgot how creepy this lady is. I struggle to open it, but it won't budge. Why now? Why won't it open now? My heart is sinking as reality dawns on me. I'm locked in. Locked in with that thing! Let me out! Let me out! Lord, please! Let me out! It slowly approaches me as I wrench the door not violently back and forth. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck! No, 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 no. Oh, yes! The door finally swings open and I couldn't be happier. Wasting no time, I leave out the door and don't look back. My feet pound against the floor in rhythm with a loud, fast heart beating up my heart. By the time I run past the hall and find myself atop the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight like it's gonna burst. But that's nothing compared to the hope I see um, of the sight the exit gives me. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and <coughs> my shoe slips and I find myself falling. Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. No. Go away. I'm dead. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not really, but yeah. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Oh yeah, this was awesome. I love this. actually makes an anime about this I would watch the fuck out of it because this is great I love it it's beautiful are you I need to like highlight that just like that little clip and just just save it because I refuse to give that up it buzz breaks the silence I start to rouse I start to rouse pull into consciousness against my own will I never felt this tired before okay before I continue I do need a fucking drink because I forgot how much I fucking talk during this entire thing, man. Jesus Christ. Alright. So let's, let me drink this real quick. I, and let me check to actually make sure that this has actually been working right. Because I didn't actually pay attention to that. Okay, it looks like it's still functioning. Okay. And let's see. Alright. No skip frames. Frame rate's good. Okay. We're still good. Shit. Um, I moved this other way. Okay. God, I forgot how much. <coughs> I forgot like how much I wind up talking because of this, because of this stuff. So, I wind up just. Yeah. Jesus Christ, there are even 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, let's check my journal real quick. Um, oh, it's the 21st? Okay. 
Okay. This is basically just a sum summary of everything that's going on. Alright. <sighs> okay. I just want to sleep, but the incessant buzzing, poking, prodding isn't letting me. My old mattress may not be the comfiest places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Five more minutes, Becca. <laughs> I spot away the hand that nudges persistently at my side. Come on. Can't you just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work hard when I'm up. You almost died. I don't think that's Becca's voice. A hand ta like, taps my cheek, and something cold is suddenly be pressed against my um, back of my head. The icy sensation slowly spreads throughout the area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. The fog immediately lifts from my mind the moment I recognize the voice, and my eyes snap open. They're looking down at me as Rose. Another woman um, lawyers beside her, but my attention is too focused on my co-agent to ask why is someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she's keeping a straight face, or trying to at least. I can't help but feel bad for uh, making her fret. The wave of dizziness washes over me as, I, as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down. Luckily, the feeling subsides after a few seconds, until only a mouth throbbing somewhere in the back of my head remains. With light assistance from Rose, um, I push myself upward. She hands me an ice pack and gestures for me to press it where I suspect a small bump is already formed. It's a light ache in the area indicates anything. Alright, Isabella, where are we? The Ermengarde Mansion. Why? Ow, my head. That might be why she's asking. And the date today? October 21st? Rose. Last one. Can you count to 15 in reverse order? 15, 14, 13, 12 teen? No, that's wrong. <laughs> 12 teen? I mean, it works. Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is in any way serious. This time, I curiously regard the woman standing beside Rose. It's simply impossible to overlook her, what well, with the way she towers over us. And here I thought Rose was already tall. Who is she anyway? One of the remaining cleaning crew? But with how firmly she's dressed, I don't think anyone would want to clean in a suit. An expensive suit at that. Gloves alone was already cost a fortune. Her eyes uh, slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an almost unreadable expression, formally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I cannot but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does. She may be far from the cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like a supervisor doing an evaluation. Just do it, please. I have them both warily, but recite everything she asked. Rose releases a breath of relief once I'm done. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you alright? Exasperation soon replaces the doik. The memory is still a little fuzzy, but the attic and- There- there was someone, Rose. In the attic. Someone? You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute- No, not any of those. They're- Ugh. I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. They look at me like I'm insane now. <laughs> Both Rose and the lady look at me like a friend of their head. Did I say something weird? Rose quickly casts a positive glance at the woman before the awkward silence stretches down further. It's her saleswoman smile. The same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I just showed th this to troublesome clients, or to just avoid trouble in general, she advised. So the same one she gives me when I've done something particularly absurd that may cause us to lose potential sale. Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes both my shoulders, gently squeezes it with as much patience as she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really all right? What happened? I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And... and there's... whoever it is. And I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Fair. Oh. Oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? 
You left the main door open. We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose. Perhaps it is a concussion. <laughs> are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't miss an important so just because of a minor bump on the head. An extremely minor bump. Yeah, sure. You just fell down a flight of stairs. That ain't minor. I had a worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also the part where I may lose my bonus B BRC promise, but that's completely besides the point. That is completely the entire point. Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return the cold com compress to her and push myself on the floor. I have to use the staircase railing to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-okay. Sure. Triple exchange a worried glance and Rose summons a contemplative look. I bite my lower lip in anticipation as she says no. All right, you in. A small threads to slip out of me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Crystal. Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. And actually, Rose is right. It could really be a fucking serious injury. I mean, you know... It... it yeah. <clears throat> Suddenly, a small cough sounds against the walls of foyer, interrupting our banter. Someone is, is looking expectantly at, at two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in a scary and negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me probably would have wished to be like her. <clears throat> I'd like a response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at I me mean, in question. Words get caught on my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usual, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. Irish last name? Or Scottish? I'm not really sure which. Based on the location, probably Scottish. She hands her, her um, Rose her business card. The world's interior designer catches my eyes before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for the 17th century influences then. I won't hold it against her though. Despite the hearsay and remaining, un and remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been kept completely intact and, um, and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people will find that trip to the past feeling appealing. After all, with what's uh, with what is offers? Wait. Oh wait. After all, with what it offers, this place could ha be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please. Is the parlor like a sitting room? Uh, like just where you show your guests and everything? I'm actually not positive. Actually, I barely even know what a fucking sitting room is anyway. But still. Thanks. There's no need for it though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glanced at me, and I returned it with an equally perplexed look. And I guess I better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should get my mouth shut. Last of irritation crosses her face, but instantly disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? She hired me to handle the interior design for their new home. This is the Ermengarde Mansion, right? Yes. It is. But she pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Um, I think we'll check with our supervisor. Will probably be better in this situation than saying, "I got no idea what the fuck's going on." 
Suddenly, Rosa's dreams are elbow. Those few moments had given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns to gaze on me, but I stay on my ground. Besides, it isn't like I've dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. I if you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seeing me deep in thought after I finished. She appears to be a reasonable person anyway. Given the proper explanations, she surely understand. I thought something looked odd. Excuse me, I need to call my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I believe a si breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I almost don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job, and I can't help but sweat with pride. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxburn office and check even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if for some reason something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. That's a whole new level of affair we've been working We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCullough returns, looking a little frustrated, but with an apology clear on her face. She's... I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You can stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can yeah. you please get it for me? Sure. Rose takes gains that I wish... Ri I've actually really always have a trouble, hard time saying wrist... Wrist... Watch. Wrist watch. There we go. Okay. I was having trouble saying, saying that for some reason. I have no damn idea why. Before tossing the, uh, me a set of keys. And hurry. We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay. Got it. The two of them disappeared behind the parlor door. Their departure brings the stillness to keep me company. Neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone like this, it's impossible not to think of what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as lucid as it normally is. Then again, Rosary said she didn't receive a call from me. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. I want some. I want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such, so I can work in peace. So a small part of my mind begs to differ. And if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's going on, and I don't want to know. The keys Rose hit, um, had just handed me just, wait, had, had just handed me dig into my palm. It's jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I clutch in it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I haven't have taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer close to my body, I exit the house to get what Rose asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Scary times. Alright, let me check this out. Okay, Marianne really took that well. Then... Okay. Alright, so I guess this few hours later. Um, if a lot of people have already gathered in front of the, um, mansion's front yard by the time we've officially opened the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or unaddressed, or unaddressed in their presence. Men and women of, of both statuses, all dressed in the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying color, composed of meat, medium-sized crowd. The necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver gold and gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some have ridiculously fancy feathered hats on their head. I really hope there aren't any magpies living in the, uh, living nearby like the stories. Those birds would have a field day in this. 
They're murmuring amongst themselves, looking at the um, estate's faint facade. Estate's facade bit of praise me. Okay, I think I got that. There's some arguing about whose mansion has superior architecture. Stupid. Weird words, people. But most of this job says Rose calls for the attention. They don't want you please being ordered around. But what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Yeah, I don't want to go back up there. <laughs> Hearing this, if you wander to me, they are most the old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all the stairs. Miss McCallow joins our group, but what catches my eye is the elegant dress um, pair she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you. Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. <laughs> I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. <laughs> okay. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. Ah, uh, they must be the clients she was talking about. I've never seen their face somewhere before. So magazine or the television? I can't remember. Then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news one way or another. I won't be surprised if those two already have. People who are popular though, they aren't as dressed as loudly as the others in their simplicity. They come full stand out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to, to lead head Lead heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy sitting beside her doesn't seem to mind, though. And if I'm gonna be a bit bolder in my assumptions, I say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I think that the brother and sister was for the public display of affection. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they're indeed a couple. My only sunshine. That's cute. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is to get this deal closed before the current owners can even think about canceling the listing. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave enough, brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. When they are whispering among themselves or go ooh and aahing at one thing or another, they ask questions. Hold on, my mouth's getting dry again. Fuck. Jesus Christ, that's gets so damn dry. <laughs> okay. Alright. When they're whispering among themselves, or ooing and aahing over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went, to the history of the place, I answer them all. I'm really happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture mostly. However, I'm careful to mention anything about the urban legend. Not good material for a sales talk, and even if the entire population knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass thing, colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengard. Alright, I know, like, she, like, seems, like, all stupid right now and stuff, but... I played enough of this game before, um, I before I had to stop and then restarting now. to know she's actually extremely smart. Um, so... I gotta wonder if she's pretending right now, or if she literally actually doesn't know what the stained glass windows are. But she's supposed to be very smart. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. 
By the time I stop talking, her attention is already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Okay, he sounds so snobby. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, ma'am. But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. So confident. I mean, I know how it goes right now, but still. No, I don't remember how far I actually have this game, though, either. The rest of their conversation gets lost in the chat of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. <laughs> Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Beside the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put in re um, retaining the room's classic appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room in, in particular looks amazing, like the ones I've seen in fairy tale books. And mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soot and tar staining of the bricks, and how much a pain the are did it um, cleaning this, this would be, they've still managed to pull this off. Or make it look presentable, at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. Yes, I think so. It's the first time this guy's spoken up. Mr. Luke Wright, my memory supplies from the forums they signed earlier. Sudden attention has cast me off guard. At the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any, in any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time, something lights up in his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now, he gives you the impression of a child who's been who's seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always wondered how cute when I, whenever I see children out of the way. My younger siblings, especially. On a grown man? It's almost funny. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Wow, that's actually a lot. Truly. And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. 46 acres? Fuck. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative look on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say him further. Spy Power seems really pleased that, um, that he has started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score. I can't wait to tell Rose. Um, hold up. There we go. Rose's tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover mo almost every room on the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny, this is the first time BRC has um the first time BRC had to survey the property. I could complain how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care. No matter how much my feet hurt. If it takes like 30 minutes to get through the damn first, like the ground floor, I guess the way they say in this case, then that is too big. <laughs> That's God. I mean, yeah, I know that um, she's still describing everything, but still, I don't, I don't think I could ever live a, like live in a mansion or anything. It's just outrageously big. Um. Especially like one like celebrity mansions that like have so many rooms, but you're but you like so many bedrooms and stuff, and you only like live in like a couple of them. It's so weird. I don't understand the point of that. I mean, I guess I'm I guess it could be I'm not rich. That might be why. <laughs> but it just to me, legitimately does not make any damn sense. <laughs> you know. 
loses my excitement over possible sale. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It starts small, the goose on my skin, a feeling of being washed intently. Whispers in my ears. Oh, fuck, that's creepy. Um, and shadows, I'm dancing, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes um, that are gone when I turn to look. I can he I kept hearing I keep hearing like help me in the background. A chill settles down my spine, making me feel sick. I just break out in a cold sweat. I I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If I can just excuse me, everyone, we we will be taking a fifteen minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. Out of the sit while retreat to a quiet corner to cover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just got Becca's cold. Don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while. The same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. <sighs> Until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? Y yes ma'am oh look at you having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting a little not bit. a problem ma'am i'm just doing my job what a hard worker anyway isabel right isabella actually but yes what can i help you with ma'am right please just hana call me hana Honestly, though, she's like one of my favorite characters here. She's so nice. She, for somebody so rich, she's actually extremely nice, too. I just wanted to ask. How okay, soon that's kind of rude to as move fuck. In? When I think about it, what I just said. But for some, like, stereotypically, like, and everything, you get. People like her would be, like, all mean and snobby. But she's very, like, down to earth and stuff, comparatively, at least. I mean, yeah. She is like has already made these like decisions and everything, but um, just the way she acts with peop with people and everything, um, like uh, that'll be shown. It'll be shown like later on in the game, but she's generally pretty nice to them, even if the way I did I was teasing, but kind of funny. God, I speak so much too much during this game. We're gonna have to take like a break um soon because of because wow. Okay. I just wanna ask, how soon were we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The same feeling plague plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I you see but we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if she's tasted particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. And, just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. You're the... Mansion, a place like this, probably. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Oh, fair. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. And it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary... or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> what would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I tried to wince um, when her nail was digging to my shoulder. 
I can't help but send in a project, poly, um, imploring look at Miss Bacala, um, who only gives me an apologetic smile and shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time taking the paper from my hand and shuffling to the bunch. Oh man, Rose is gonna be angry at me before I let her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. It's Isabella. Honestly, God, I actually do that my little sister. I call her... Uh, her name is actually actually is Isabella. And I call, I call her Isabel all the time. Like... But it's also just I also do the same thing my other sister too. It's just like how I speak, kind of like when it it's become like a form of habit where I just like speed through their names and stuff. Um, I think if I were anybody else, they probably would be she at least she, her would probably be a little bothered by it. But because it's me in the first place, she doesn't really mind that much. Uh, especially considering she knows how I pronounce everybody's name, like my mom and dad were my, my like instead of like saying mommy and daddy and everything like that, it was like my dad, daddy and all that shit. Like I just cut out so many damn letters when I speak sometimes that um, it just yeah, it just happens. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors, too, and... What's this? Up, oh, they got the letter. The confusion and disgust appears across her face. Turned to her husband, he merely shrugs and replies. That's, uh, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling, buttercup. Art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. It looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as... dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. How is this better than an art, the art exhibit from last month? You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this... form. Yeah. It's my turn to be puzzled. What does it mean? Rose and I double-checked everything. Are, are the papers not hand I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I didn't want to mess this up. But the way Ma'am Hannah is um, leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt that's her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. I smile back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I can only stare down the paper at the letter in my hand. The sides crinkle in my grip and my breathing grows labored. Dread quickly fills my brain. Isabella? My... Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I wanted nothing more than say that, no, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place. Because I remember everything clear as day. The letter and that woman in the attic. It's real. The letter. I I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. I couldn't even tell... How do I even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Um... Shit, I actually don't know what choice to pick. Fuck. Um. Um. What did I pick last time? Fuck. Um. She's 
probably gonna be pissed off, but show her. I blew it out before I could think twice about what I'm gonna say. Rose, we need to get out of here. This place is cursed. Hold on, who did this affect? Oh, Marianne, of course. Wait, how? Do I don't even pronounce her name right. Rose casts a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are engaged in conversation with the peers. But those curious enough turn their heads in our group's attention direction to give her a trademark salesman smile. A tight expression on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella, we've already had a conversation about this weeks ago. Those are just stories. And I'm telling you that it's not. I saw something in there. It's not... It's not human at all. I thought it was just nothing, but... Isn't this letter proof enough? She gently reaches to pluck the paper out of my hand. But even taking a glance at it, she folds it back neatly. Look, I'm really getting worried about you. I know you want to see this open house through, but your condition is more important. Give me a few minutes to wrap things up here, and I'll drive you to the nearest hospital. No, no! You don't understand! There isn't a condition, Rose. No concussion at all. I'm fine. But this place isn't, and you're being stubborn about it. Before Rose can open her mouth to retort, a hand lands on both our shoulders. Pull the tuba at a distance closer. Now, now, ladies, what seems to be the problem here? Nothing, sir. I just had to clarify a few things with my colleague. Well, it certainly seems intense. A smile fits the two of you better, in my opinion. <laughs> Especially darling little Lily here. The fuck? Lily? He's a shoulder gentle squeeze while an inscrutable uh, smile spreads across his face. It's Isabella, sir. Of course, of course. But my point still really? stands. And with two beautiful ladies here, I'm sure. And mm. I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her, darling. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure of her shoulder lifts as soon as those words leave his wife's lips. While the scowl on her face is like a splash of cold water on me. It's also impossible to miss the displeased frown on Ms. Pacala's face. The realization that I might lose a sail because of my outburst instantly dawns on me. Rose be beyond pissed. Uh, I think I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Bow my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather myself to make a quick exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble and Rose can't be um, can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler. Softer, a fond smile on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. You didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And... look. She hesitates, to completely turn on off before shifting her gaze under her hands. A small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a folded piece of paper. It's that stupid letter again. My hands stiffen when she ta gives it back, but I take it nevertheless. More is an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can. But I have this nagging feeling that, one way or another, it will find its way back to me, regardless of what I do about it. I know for a fact, now that I've actually done it, that I did not pick that choice last time. I don't really remember what happened last time, but yeah. Rose, this is... you have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly. And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. But I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something... I don't know, this... big. I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... My mind stops. What? Wait! No! I can still work! I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, Hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... 
You're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She claps her hands together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand. To some extent. That doesn't mean I'm feeling less awful. Or that myself, at the unlucky turn of the situation is taken, or for her, I really don't know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob, and I don't even know what that means! <laughs> I mean, to be fair, based on what I got, her first assignment was a dead body in the fucking couch. So... I, th I think it's a little fair if she freaked out during that. <laughs> <laughs> As a memory, we both burst into the help plus giggles. Ernest strains looks from the gets milling around the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? I'm still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out on this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. <laughs> it's wow. not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. <laughs> At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. With left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. Few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass window. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderly gathered some way across me is occupied in a friendly banter about which one um, would cost more to buy. A little argument here, and occasional laughter teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing the past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. <laughs> Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help. Speaking of, I should call Ash. A few hours earlier from what I told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Well, didn't Rose just offer too, so... Or bribe him to give him one. Not that I ever accept the latter. Personal convictions at all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable about him, despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever way works, a free ride is so free ride. There's Rose's offer too, but despite what she says, I know sh she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a favor as small as this, the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers, asking for a decent signal later. <laughs> the call finally connects and. Shit! What's up, Bob Ash from Deluxe City? Back as one jack, can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. So what? Shit, how loud is this thing even? A sharp ringing fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant quiet that is set up. Soon enough, heads begin to turn. Who's the source, including mine included? My eyes run around the small crowd before zeroing in on the lone figure crouched behind the same group of old people, checking out the door the decor's moment ago. He's facing away from me, fumbling with something in his hands. But I don't need to see his face to know who's back it is. Oh, to recognize that dumb Parker anywhere. Without bothering to end the call, I march towards him. 
Is what happened today? I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Of all the times to. Ashton Frey! What happened next is something I'll surely regret for having not recorded. <laughs> he has out an undignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping out from his grip. It bounces from one hand to another in his poor attempt to catch it, before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a sounding clack. I kind of feel sorry for the phone. <laughs> and the floor. But it's not every day you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn his stupid, detec stupid detective senses. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Ha! An awkward time passes between us. A blink. <coughs> He makes a face. Then, in a too quick motion, he ducks to retrieve his ab abused gadget. While a grin threatens to break off my lips. He doesn't move my eyes <laughs> when he straightens, but a flush crept up, up his neck and cheeks. Another universe where we ha I've known each other for five years and suffering through his teasing isn't a day-to-day -day occurrence. Chances are, I'd find that adorable. Endearing, even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his obnoxiously calm and collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cat. I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. What? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way! <laughs> oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. No. <laughs> talk to yourself! You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? <laughs> For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the canary. <laughs> Suddenly, checking out nook and cranny in, um, in his phone for any damage or scratches seems to be more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash. I could be looking to buy a house. <laughs> yeah, okay. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He gets a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious, I follow his gaze. Before I could figure out what caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just finished working on something, so I dropped by. I still don't see how his work has anything to do with why he's here. In my confusion, he drops the hand on my arm and he like he has touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of his neck and i uh i said i'll see if i can pick you up turns out i can uh, free time and all so here here i am uh figured you'd still be busy and so i roamed around for a while <laughs> it's kind of cute oh you should have mentioned that sooner i was about to throw you out <laughs> throw me hey i was given a pamphlet I think that makes me a legitimate client. Eh. We have mandatory sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. <laughs> right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... <laughs> Never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown on my face because he pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Sometimes I forget how easy reading, peop reading people is for Ash, given how often he, he looks as if everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes, hoping he will drop the subject and won't ask him more questions. Last thing I want to tell him is what happened, especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person I think I'll ever tell the letter about if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he's helped me, even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts and supernatural? You would never believe in those when you hear it from a friend. Spe except maybe it's Rebecca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he would do is give you an explanation why those things have no chance of being real. At worst, he's insufferable. you are poke fun at you in every single chance he gets. Ashle. What did I ever do to him? He never does that to Beck or Zack. I can already imagine how things would go the moment I spill a word of what I saw. Nope. Over my dead body. 
Who even catches his attention? I should have let her deep in my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Oh, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zack's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around five or six? What about... Hey, Isabella, wait up! <laughs> I just abandoned him. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna take a break for a couple minutes. Um, not only is my mouth, like, extremely dry, because, well, I haven't been talking, like, non-stop or anything, it's still a lot, um, and just having my little sips here and there isn't helping that much, I need to, like, get a proper drink, so, give me just a few, mo few minutes and I'll be right back. Alright, there we go. I think I got everything fixed back again. Should be fixed back again. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Russia Air greets me as soon as the main door is open. Not the usual undraft, but it's still a welcome change from the stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. 
Ash's his footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes thumping hard against the polished concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out once, twice. The mansion still looms in the background. Whispers call me back, shadows beckoning. That's not creepy at all. I don't look back. We spent the ride to back. We spent the ride back to Luxburn City in relatively silent manner, with only the radio's distorted hum in the background full of silence. Occasionally, Ash will reach out to fiddle with it, with it until the signal settles, or it's on a respectable volume. But otherwise, he doesn't say anything. Neither do I. However, in the uh, furtive glances he's been sending my way are signs. I know there are things he's itching to ask about. Ask since we left the mansion. I keep my eye trained on the passing senior outside, in the small hope, a small hope that my disinterest would dissuade him. Doubtful. Here. All of a sudden, he tosses something at me from the small um, compartment at his side. It's me cleanly on the chin before I can make a move to catch it. A small, the small package makes a soft landing on my lap instead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The glare ascended and wipes the smirk about to form cleanly off his face. He clears his throat, his eyes on the road again. I swear, he did that on purpose. Ignoring him, I flipped the hat, forgotten package on my lap. I won't say no to free food, but why are you giving away cereal bars? I mean... It's chocolate cereal bars. I always have one on my person, and you look like you're about to pass out back there. Have you eaten lunch yet? <laughs> I don't even get a chance to deny it because right on cue, my stomach rumbles um, loudly and an empty gnawing feeling on my belly becomes nose unnoticeable. No surprises there. I did skip breakfast and lunch so I could catch up with Becca on while she was on break. I was hoping to get a small meal after. I guess I, with everything going on, I just forgot until Ash mentioned it. It's not like the hollow feeling is new to me. Honestly, this person. If anything, it's just one of those things I've gotten used to ignoring over the years growing up. A uh, thanks. Then I tear open the package and start nibbling on the edge of the bar. Apart from the acknowledging nod, I shouldn't say anything after that small exchange. For that, I'm grateful. After getting an ear from Be both Becca and Rose, it's nice to be able to just sit down with someone who's not going to nag at you. How'd the open house go? The usual. We got a bigger crowd than normal because of the property's fame, but really, no different from the typical open house. Mm. On second thought, it actually looks like a fancy party more than an open house. I've never felt so underdressed in my life. <laughs> Weren't you there? I wasn't really listening. I should have asked someone to kick you out. <laughs> no, you won't. And what makes you so sure? One, ever since you got assigned to this property, you've been freaking out about it. Rebecca's words, not mine. <laughs> She's been complaining to me about how you talked your ears off, by the way. Two, despite your initial qualms about the place, you still took the job. Which brings us to three. It's been months since you last settled a deal, and you're short on money right now since you're back to your instant noodle diet. How do you even know about the last one? Rebecca. Rebecca. I knew it. Anyhow, you're hell-bent on selling the mansion. Even if someone you know personally is in the tour group, you aren't going to just kick them out. Every single person who went on your open house is still a prospective client to you. Even me. Uh, you're not, I don't know if you technically count as a prospective client just because I don't think you can afford that mansion. He's not entirely wrong. Oh man, I walked right into that one, didn't I? I hate you. I really hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> His answer is a small laugh. He kind of screams, I'm right, I told you so. I hate it when he does that. I'll have you know that there's already someone who's extremely interested in this property. So even if you express to any sort of interest in it, I don't think they'd be willing to let you have it. Too bad. <laughs> Provided an embacho with the rights. Ma'am Hannah in particular didn't look too pleased with what I did. I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy. Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? Not really. Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. 
Or is it the wardrobe this time? Wait, what? How many dead bodies has she found? <laughs> I mean, you meant that as a joke, but how close it, um, it is to the truth made my blood run cold and my own heart be in, um, a heavy weight in my chest. All at once, the light on my back feels a whole lot heavier, burdened by my own guilt and apprehension. Yeah, well, things happened. Stuff the right couple might not be pleased about. No need to make a fuss about it. It's normal in the business. You made them angry? Not angry. Just stuff happened. Like? Things. Did they do anything? Your clients. The rights, was it? I can't answer that. I used them without revealing everything that took place in the attic. Just based off what I already know about him, the likelihood that lying is a good thing to this to this guy, it's probably pretty low. You keep asking me about my work, yet you haven't said a single word about yours. That's not fair. Both you and Zach have literally disappeared off the face of the earth. <laughs> no for exaggeration, but changing a subject to something else is still better than lying our lying to him. Besides, I never worked with him. I'm not sure if it's because I'm just bad at it or if he's just really good at his job. He doesn't answer immediately, only momentary is shifting his glance over to me and returning it back to the road when he had to make a sharp turn. Outside, the sun has already started its descent, casting a vibrant orange glow to the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the venue for Zach's film. Checking the street signs outside, it appears Ash has taken a long route. Odd. But he's probably trying to avoid the rush hour traffic. Didn't we just talk a week ago over chat? That's different. Linking your awful memes in the group chat box every morning isn't exactly a conversation. Yeah, but... Still... Excuse me, I don't hear you calling them awful while you're laughing at all of them. <laughs> Shut up! And you aren't answering my question. There is a soft punch to the arm. I did laugh at all of them, but I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of knowing that I find most of them funny. It will only make his head bigger. Stupid Ash. Alright, alright. Lay off on the abuse. Remember that case I mentioned before? We've been trying to pin the bastard down, but it required more work than we anticipated. The guy's slippery like that. We got some good lead months ago. He recounts what he's been doing at, in the time we haven't seen each other. His usual work... The, Occasional small investigation in the big in the big case he's been stuck working on. It's stuff he couldn't mention in the brief time we chat online together. Although most of it um, trimmed down versions, only things he can tell. He always said to be careful about that. Even in the way he spins his answers to my question, just enough to satisfy my curiosity, but not to paint the whole picture. At one point, his voice takes on a strained tone when he mentions something about the big case, but I don't dwell much on it. That's normal, right? I mean, who would be frustrated if you couldn't bring someone to justice just because they keep slipping out of your fingers? If I were in his shoes, I'd definitely lose my mind. I really want to know what the big case is. I never did figure that out. And I know who he's connected to, but I'm not going to keep quiet about that for now. But, like, who he's connected to? Um, every, but I don't understand how it's, connect, how it's connected. Because I don't even know what the case is. But yeah. I just realized. Zarbucks. You can't you can't see it, but we have a Zarbucks. Alright, the story has never ceased to be entertaining regardless. But anything if things were the way um, they were back at home, maybe I wouldn't have considered take maybe I wouldn't have considered taking the same job as him. Well, nope, not really. Mama would never allow that. But the idea is still there. Look at the countless others I'd let go. Time passes between us in this manner, and before I know it, we're already at the movie house. Alright. Um. Shit, hold on. There we go. Sorry, I just had some ping and pop popping up. Yeah, it, w it went up. So if I had lied to him, it would have gone down. Thank God. 
A small crowd is already formed in the front of the theater when we arrive. The Lit Fest, short for um, Luxembourg Independent Film and Theater Festival. It attracts a large crowd, bigger crowd annually, and this year is no different. Okay. I've only been in a few indie film screenings with Zach, so I'm not an expert on the matter. But I know that for people hoping to make a big break in the industry, getting your film recognized by a local event like this is already a big deal. Especially for a newcomer like Zach. He hasn't even won an award, but... Just getting the confirmation and letter that festival community wants to include his movie in this year's lineup I already put a big grin on his face for weeks. Speaking of the guy, he's impossible to miss. Six feet tall, he appears to loom over most of the moviegoers. And with his large and heavy voice, they're so surprised when people give him a wide berth as they pass by. It's often easy to mistake him for someone intimidating at first. I, d I did, back when I didn't know any better. Ash did too, I heard. Once early in the friendship. Oh, there's Zach! This guy. I would marry him. Hey, He's awesome. you guys! Long time no see! He's great. Zach's face lights up with a smile of his own. His, he moves towards us with careful steps, taking significant effort to make himself smaller so as not to bump it or accidentally hit anyone. Typical Zach. As he nears Ash, um, casually, he raises his hand in a greeting and- Sup, Z-Man! My main man! What's crack a lackin', my homie? Oh, God. It's about supposed to get second-hand embarrassment from a game. The awkwardness that descends within the immediate vicinity of our small group is palpable enough. <laughs> Somewhere to our left, a girl giggles, and only then do I become aware of my mouth hanging open. I was amazed at how Ash can say something like that with a straight face. <laughs> Almost. This is just track record. I should be used for it now. Zach seems to be. Yo, stop trying to act black, Ashton. And you're the only one who calls me Z-Man. There's a fondness underneath his exasperated tone. If this were any other person, he'd likely be offended. But he's a friend friendship and familiarity had made those words harmless to each other's ears. Or at least enough um, for them both to take a stride. <laughs> it's been a while, Zach. I hope you didn't get into trouble again. Not much to get into trouble lately without you, I'm afraid. I'll let you know if something comes up, though. Nah, I ended up with chicken down stuck on me last time I agreed. What? I'd really love at least this year to pass without some sort of accident happening again. I want another story behind this. Hey, I take offense to that. It wasn't that bad. You really have no idea. <laughs> A B passes. This is that glass. Hey, I'm kidding. You know you can always count on me. Is a story that only the two of them are privy to. Every now and then, Ashwell and Liz Zach's help on something. But I couldn't have really found out what the deal between those two those adventures are, as Ash calls it. But both aren't willing to tell due to some, some unspoken agreement. I want more. She insists that if Ash that if it's Ash is likely not something legal or life threatening. I tend to believe her on that. Sometimes. Oh well, boys will be boys, I guess. I get Zach away from behind Ash when it's attention that she turns to me. Bella! Huh? Rebecca's not with you. Is she still sick? A bit. But she's up and went to work this morning. You know she doesn't listen to anyone that's not Ash. <laughs> yes, she does. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> You're literally the only person she'll listen to when she's feeling stubborn. It is true. They've known each other far longer than any of us in the group. Childhood friends and all. But don't worry, Zach. She's probably on her way here now. She promised she wouldn't miss your movie. Isabella! Oh, thank goodness! Speak of the devil. That warning, she grabs me by the shoulder and turns me around. Becca! You're just in time! I had to lean back when her face is almost invading my personal space. But she places her hand on either side of my head to keep me still. She stares at me intently, concern filling in her eyes. Becca, you're squishing my face! How are you? Are you alright? Why wouldn't I be? Rose called me earlier. Those four words tell me all I need to know. Since I don't have any have my family living close by, and the only other relative I have um here works on the far side of the country. Oh shit. Um 
um, far side of the country, I gave my com company Becca's contact number in case of emergency. I should have known Rose would call her. I pushed Becca's hands away from my face. Although she lets go, her eyebrows remain drawn together. Oh, no! No! Everything's good! Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about! How's your head? <laughs> <laughs> I bite back, bite back the urge to elbow him in place of trying to avoid Becca's hand as she tries to reach out for said area. I do my best to dodge her, almost moving to hide behind Zack. Sorry for using you as a human shield, Zack. Oh, it's nothing. I just slipped off a few steps on my way down. I blacked out for a few seconds and had a minor bump, but it's just that. You blacked out? It's not something to brush off. You tell her, Rose. Come on, at least let me check it. It's extremely minor. You wouldn't even know it's there. Isabella, this isn't a laughing matter. She did look pale when I saw her. Wow, thanks a lot, Ashton, you traitor. I'll get you back for this. Just you wait. What? I'm just saying it as it is. If you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. I'm sorry. Saw her? Yeah, they arrived together. Bella looked fine to me then. I don't know. Something crosses Becca's face. But it's gone before I can throw it. Oh, that's... that's good. At least she didn't have to travel alone, right? At least. Good. See? I'm okay. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. God. And... and I don't want to miss Zack's film. We can always watch it some other time. <sighs> Sorry, Zachary. No, it's good. But you guys should really keep it down. We're starting to attract some attention. It's the premiere! The premiere's different! Right, Zack? Hey, don't be putting the man in the middle. This is a good man. I don't want to... I don't want to be tied like that. I should have a pleasing look. Zack's a sensible guy. Who understand? Please understand. Not really. But Rebecca has a point. In the end, I think it's your call. Oh, for heaven's sake! Please, Becca. I really don't want to miss it. You're not missing it. We're just moving it on a different day so we can have a... Look, you guys. Uh, as just loud, un unexpected... Loud sigh unexpectedly cuts through the conversation. He's pinching the bridge of his nose as he speaks. Something he usually does when he's getting impatient. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. True Besides, that. she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me. If she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? I'm not. But if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Head injuries? Tell you what. If I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. He's the second person to say that. Is that, that good enough for you? I already know the answer before Becca voices it out. When at last she releases a deep breath and nods, above a great reluctance, I really tackled her into a hug. Thanks, Becca! It's always been you with him, isn't it? Did you say something? Me? Uh, nothing. God. Don't mind me. I forgot. I think she has a she had a crush on Zach, right? Not Zach, um, Ash. God, and here there is oblivious as fuck. Um or he has a crush on Isabella, who is in turn oblivious as fuck. Because just based off her like dialogue and everything, um like the little inner voice dialogue shit, she notices nothing of the sort at all. And yeah. God. Me, me, nothing. Don't mind me. If you say so. Okay, guys, showtime's close, so I think I'm gonna get us some snacks. My treat. And then let's head inside. Free snacks. Uh, anyone here has a smaller bill? I think I do. Hold on. I pull myself out of, um, off of Rebecca to grab, get my wallet from her bag again. What's this? It's already Ash's hand before I can react. Behind him, Becca and Zack are both giving the piece of paper and tree look. No! Give it back! 
It's just a paper. I don't care! Give it! Looks ancient, too. Why do you keep this around? I try to reach for it, but he holds the paper away above my head. I've never been particularly sensitive about my own height, but right now, I really wish I had the advantage over him. Don't open it! What's the big deal? It's not like it's a love letter. I don't see any reason to- Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? <laughs> Even if it is, it's not for you. <laughs> okay, now I'm curious. I'm telling you, it's nothing like that. It's... The rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. I can't breathe. My heart's stuck in my throat, pounding, threatening to burst out. Vaguely, I know how my hands are trembling at my sides. Clasping them together doesn't do any good. They're still shaking. But I hang on to them regardless. The awful, sick weight that has taken its core in my stomach back in the open house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone please. Today is turned out to be a horrible nightmare. Send this to five people or else. Well, that's... interesting. Um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? Ash reads the paper in front of me, giving a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see it. I don't want to see it. The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. Maybe I should have thrown it away when I had the chance. That way, that way. It's not a prank. It makes all of them stop. I am surprised at how steady my voice is. What did you say? This isn't a prank! I saw something! Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> See? This is why I didn't want to tell you guys. Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? It's not a joke! Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella. Even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. <laughs> There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit is true. But it's real! What do you think I saw? A hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Don't bother. Regarding the word, I snatched the letter out of Ash's hands and stuffed in my bag with more force than necessary. I'm tired. I got cursed, saw a ghost, probably lost a sale, got kicked out of the open house I'm supposed to be hosting. My own friends won't believe me and all of them think I'm crazy. To top it all off, there's a dolly in the back of my head begging for a little attention. I can't afford to give it right now. Honestly, there's only so much a person can take within a single day. I just want to go home, curl up in my bed, and never think about today. Before I can take a single step away from the group- GUYS! Zach rarely raises his voice when there's a- Even when there's a point he wants to drive home. And hearing him take that tone completely throws me off. Even Ash and Rebecca. Whatever harsh words um, had to come from the argument immediately die in our tongues. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? We haven't seen each other for months. I I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever get to talk to Bella over chat. Please. He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool and distant, has also been looking forward to this. He even took time to call this morning as a reminder. He never does that. Becca too. I'm pretty sure another reason why she got out of bed today. Yet despite Zach's attempts to lighten things up, or 
Her ashes and Becca is a cleansing gesture. It ties my chest remains. I should have kept it to myself, but, or at least went with the idea that's a prank. If I did, things might not have turned out that way they had. No sour moods or bad vibes. Careless. So careless. Maybe leaving is a better decision for us all. Oh wait, I should stay. Any other day, I'd excuse myself to um, go straight home. But this is something special to Zack. Something you worked so hard to bring it li to life. I should know better. I might be having a bad day, but with a few people I care about, far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. I wonder if the thing in my attic follows me home. I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see it when I close my eyes. And maybe if I let... Maybe if I stay, let her heads cool down before telling them what happened, they'll listen to me. There's nothing you can solve with a, um, can't solve with a calm head. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to did Zack. It smiles back on my, it smiles back on my face when I look back at if them. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. <laughs> oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. <clears throat> this time, I really do send an elbow straight into his stomach. Stupid Ash being vertically challenged has his perks too. What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby. I'm not one. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Stop it. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too. If you repeat that, I swear I'll. <sighs> Let's just go. Then the word, Becca goes inside. She used to have to wait for us when I call after her. Ash and I exchange looks at that. Same question likely swimming in our minds. Did something happen at school that after I left? Is she having a bad day too? Nah, it's the jealousy girl. I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. Cool. But you'll miss it. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? And it ain't like I haven't seen it. <laughs> I made it, remember? I'll be in there soon. One friendly tap on my shoulder, and then he's gone. A few moviegoers I'm swimming about. Some are still waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise, most are, of the crowd are already inside. There's nothing uh, much for us to do here now. Not a word of protest comes from me when Ash gestures for the two of us to head inside. And then? Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened to the mansion. To be fair, Zack was the one who brought it up again. In his own movie premiere. <laughs> now the film is just serving as background noise while we're speaking in hushed tones, careful not to disturb the small hall. Well, except for Ash. Let's hope we don't end up arguing again. We'll get kicked out for sure. <laughs> Although, with how loud Ash voices, we'll probably get thrown out way before any argument happens. Only Becca still remains to gross the movie, completely ignoring us. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only we refer to. If I didn't know any better, I think we did something to offend her. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. He's one of the smartest people I know, but geez, he should learn to listen. Plus, didn't you say that he doesn't believe in these things? Why is he in this conversation again? I heard what you said, but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? <laughs> He's got a point. Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. That's it. There are no ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Yeah, but I was thinking. Maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? Oh, the house did change hands over the years. From one distant relative to the um, ermine guards to another. One of th none of them bothered to live in it, though. And it remained that way up until his current owners decided to sell it. Why didn't I think of that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive to the place. That's not a bad idea. 
I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering a suggestion, are you? Do you have a better idea? I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. You do that? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. <laughs> there are very few times in my life I wish I g my glories could kill. This is one of those. Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. No, wait, that's not what I meant. Ethnographer. I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist too, of course, if you- Ashton, if you don't stop- Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. He's just digging, a, digging his grave at this point. Huh? What? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. And can you guys keep it down? Sorry, the scaredy cat here mentioned curses. Not that I'm saying this is one. But talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out, teach you a couple things. And probably put your fears to rest since this looks to be bothering you a lot. Ash might be right too. However, Zach, however, what Zach suggested is something I'm more familiar with. Granted, they don't believe me. They're only giving me these suggestions for my mind at ease. But it's better than being ignored or laughed like that. I can take the comfort in knowing that they're willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? Okay, so I know I remember. Oh shit, our thing dropped a shit ton. Anyway, though, um, I do actually remember which one I pressed for this one. Um, it's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't know. I. I know I I said I would meet with the priest um, last time. Um, I do have like some of this up on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. But I'm gonna do the professor this time. See what happens. I'll think about it. But if ever, I'd like to give talking to Andrew a try. Is that okay? Won't he have other things to do? He is a bit busy, but he'll make time for me. He's my go-to person when I'm stuck in something. He won't mind if I bring a friend with me this time. If you're sure. I guess that settles it then. Guys, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it. You're not even paying attention yourselves. It ain't a big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. If they're in a project, look, e even if Ash is, is the only one that she should be reprimanding, <laughs> um, but her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting this way, there's a big chance something's nagging at her. We really need to talk. We all fall into comfortable silence after. The only, the kind only you can share with people you're most com most at ease with. For the first time today, the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Night has fallen by the um, time we exit the movie house. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling f uh, full of people. Those about to head home, th those about to meet someone, even those wandering about. Walking this unfamiliar um, and seen unfamiliar souls, it strikes me how easy it is to get lost in a city nondescript as Luxborn. I was afraid too at one point, back when I was new and had stuff put in place. And now it's uh, familiar faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. Zach and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Becca and I cross to the other side. Uh, sorry, I just want to check what time it is. Cross to the other side of the street. Uh, the former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of before the end of the day. And Ash, and who knows, he never tells. Sometimes you randomly appear at your doorstep looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zach a lot, much to his frustration. But he's a busy guy too, in spite of the state back air he gives off. Thanks for today, everyone! <laughs> no problem, Zach. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Oh god, it's back. Huh? A sensation. Cold, sickening, drowning. My chest is tight. Breathing is becoming labored. I can taste blood in my mouth. The edges of my vision blurs. 
In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reached out to me. Pleading, even as I clenched my eyes tight and clasped my hands over my ears. Whispering and whispering and whispering. Calling out. No, not me. Somebody. Isabella? Earth to Isabella? At her voice, the whole world suddenly snaps in place. The memory is gone. When I open my eyes, Becca raises an eyebrow at me in question. Weren't you listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... yeah. Just... okay. Sorry. I spaced out. You always do that. Hmm. I've always had a complaint, but never before sneaking a glance to the far end of the street. Where the voice came from, where it's said the might be staring at me. Nothing. There's only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Becca parked her car. If I'm expecting to see some something or someone there, I try not to let it show. I try not to think of the tiny pinpricks of fear crawling through my stomach. So you got some other time? Y yeah see ya! Another glance, and with the final wave, we go off our own ways. I don't even know what I saw. I don't even know what I heard. I don't want to know. And this is what would help me sleep at tonight. What we get back to normalcy in my life, and so be it. Next day. Alright, so... It's already after 2. Um... It's late as fuck. Okay, it looks like you're gonna Zachary, but oh, Marianne actually. Jesus Christ, that was a long time ago. Okay. But I'm going ahead and stopping here. Um Yeah, I already saved. I'm going ahead and stopping here. I'm just gonna get a little tired. I do gotta go tomorrow. I mean not incredibly or late or anything, but it's still I prefer to get up. Just like going to stop now so I don't like get too into it and stay up another like three hours. I've, I've done that a lot, unfortunately, but yeah, I had a lot of fun um, playing this game again. It's been such a long damn time since I have, so I was like really excited to play. Um, thanks, Damon, for watching, for like just tuning in for in the beginning and lurking for a bit. Uh, but I'm going to head off to bed. Well, kind of. He's going to stop for today, and I will probably play this game like again in the next like day or two. Um, but yeah. Good night, everyone. <laughs>